Greetings and welcome to our virtual worship service. Pastor Al Smith, Gam Williams, Sabbath Ministries and Lashunda Smith invite you to share, like, comment and subscribe to our channel. It is our hope that you will be inspired by this third sermon in our prayer series. Be blessed and as always stay safe. Hi, I need your help. Can you do me a small favor? Share or like or comment and then please subscribe to our channel. Please join us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we invoke your presence just one more time in this worship experience. We praise you, we glorify you, and we thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to have communication with you called prayer. Now, heal us, Lord. Forgive us of our many sins. Use me, Lord, until you use me up. And the church said, Amen. Our text is found in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the first verse. At your leisure, please read verses 1 through 5, Living Bible. I waited patiently for God to help me. He heard my cry. God's word for the people of God. And the people of God said, thanks be to God. Think with me on the subject. Pray about it. Pray about it. This is our third prayer series. If you could pray for one thing, let it be an idea. Percy Sutton 
CEO and President of Inner City Broadcasting. Pin those words. In this ever-changing society, we want everything fast and in a hurry. We expect God to be like McDonald's and other fast food restaurants. We prefer air fryers and microwaves to ovens for cooking or baking our Sunday dinner. Nice and slow. We just want everything fast. But that's not how God operates. Hannah in the Bible is an inspiration around prayer and spiritual patience. She knew that God was the one in charge. Whether she could conceive a child, she took it to the Lord in prayer. Her sorrows, her fears to him daily. We don't know how long Hannah waited on the Lord. All the Bible says in 1 Samuel, the first chapter, the seventh verse, is year by year. Sometimes we must wait for our prayer to be answered. But I know that God hears our prayer. Oh, the backdrop of our text is in the book of Psalms. It is an anthology of poems and hymns giving God praise. The text was written by King David, also known as the Rector of Music. This psalm of thanksgiving starts off saying, I waited patiently for God. Our subject, pray about it, is a reminder that in everything we do or say, we need to take it to the Lord first in prayer. Oh, pray about it. I will make three observations from this text. The art of winning, lifting you higher, unlimited blessings. Pray about it. Oh, the art of waiting. Verse 1, I waited patiently for God to help me. With all that David went through, the loss of his best friend, Jonathan, David having to run for his life because of an insecure king and a jealous king trying to kill him. Oh, the many battles he fought where he could have been killed. His many failed marriages. Oh, that severely scarred their children. Where some of them even attempted to kill their own father. Yes, David brought a lot of this on himself. Yet it taught that David, as it teaches us, that the art of waiting develops humility because we must acknowledge God is in control. Oh, the art of waiting builds discernment, trust, faith, empathy, and character. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 31st verse speaks, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, let me call a witness. The other day, Reggie, my godson, said, Pastor Al, I sure love some barbecue. But I prefer my meat smoked versus an open flame. Yes, it takes much longer. But the meat is moist, tender, 
and juicy. You see, the smoke locks in the favor. Oh, I waited patiently for God to help me. Then he listened and heard my cry. The art of waiting. Pray about it. Oh, lifting you higher. Oh, found in verse 2, he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out from the bog and the mire, and he set my feet on higher ground. Oh, this is a prayer for help when David was in trouble. The cause of this distress is not specified, but David acknowledges that the troubles were related to his sins. They were abrogated by the gloating of his enemies. This prayer begins with praise to God for his past miracle, verses 1 through 5. And God lifted him out of the pits. Oh, does anyone know anything about the pits of life? Oh, raise your hand if you know about the pits. Luke the first chapter, the 52nd verse reads, He has torn princes from their thrones, exalted the lowly. You see, when you are exalted, you are lifted up. Oh, I call my second witness like the state of California. Florida was hit by a hurricane and severe thunderstorms. They caused mudslides, trapping people and leaving some for dead. Or authorities used high-powered cranes to lift some of the people out of the muck and the mire. They were trapped. Oh, like God through prayer, he will lift you out of the depths of the pits. He will lift you higher. Oh, come on, somebody. Say higher. Pray about it. Unlimited blessings. Oh, verse 4. Many blessings are given to those who trust in the Lord and have no confidence in those who are proud or trust in idols. As a result of David's prayer, his praise moved God, and God gave a new song. David showed a commitment to God because he was willing to wait patiently on the Lord, thus causing unlimited blessings. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. I'm too blessed to be stressed. The Lord showed his benevolence to others because of David's trust. Prayer is precisely the place where we discover the will of God. We seek his mind sifting through his word and thinking and thanking him for God is faithfully at work in our lives. First Thessalonians, the third chapter, the 12th verse. And may the Lord make your love to grow and overflow to each other and to everyone else. Just as I love towards you, here is my final witness. You, hallelujah, you are my final witness because of your faithfully waiting, hallelujah, patiently on God. He has given you unlimited blessings. Is there anyone out there that knows anything about unlimited blessings? When you waited on the Lord, when you didn't stress, when you didn't throw in the towel, God answered your prayer. Unlimited blessings in your spiritual, physical, family life, in your finances. Somebody ought to shout right now and say unlimited blessings. Pray about it from a manger to an old rugged cross to an empty tomb. Jesus lives. Pray about it. Jesse Dixon put it this way. I know what prayer can do. I 
I found the answer in prayer. I'll tell it everywhere. I know, I know, I know what prayer can do. Prayer will heal the sick. Prayer will raise the dead. I remember one day, 5,000 souls were fed. Prayer, prayer, prayer changes things. I've been out, out on the stormy seas. I've been hungry. I've been sick. I've been filled with misery. Along came Jesus. Jesus rescued me. I found the answer in prayer. I'll tell it everywhere. I know, I know, I know what prayer can do. Oh, come on, somebody. Pray about it. Our sorrows, our hurts, our anguish, our anger, our spirit of vindictiveness and revenge, our spirit of brokenness and despair. I waited patiently for God to help me. He heard my cry. Pray about it. Pray about it. Amen. 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 Well, I pray that something that has been said, sung, or preached blessed your soul today. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess and repent of my sins. Come in to my life. Today, I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, we call that conversion. You say, Reverend, I've been visiting so many churches. I'm looking for the perfect church. Stop looking. If you have found a Bible reaching, a Bible teaching, a Bible preaching church where Jesus is the center of its joy. You have found the church you are looking for. We call that membership. You say, Reverend, I was born in the church, grew up in the church, sang in the choir, served on the usher board. But I thought I outgrew the church, so I left. I'm so anxious to come back home. Well, we will be more than happy for you to reconnect yourself to the church. We call that watch care. We call that rededication. And you may have given up on the church, but the Lord has never given up on you. Then you say, Reverend, I see you on YouTube, Facebook Live, and other parts of social media. How can I become a part of your ministry? Well, so glad you asked that question. We would love to have you. We call that virtual membership. And details are in the chat. But whatever you do, make the Lord first in your life. We want to thank you for your generosity and your love in sowing seeds of faith into the ministry. If by chance you want to continue or you want to start for the very first time, there's an app on your cell phone called Cash App or Zelle. Details are in the chat. 
Thank you. Lastly, we want to thank you for a moment of your time. Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Same time, same station. But remember these words. Pray about it. Oh, come on, somebody. Pray about it. God answers prayer. God bless you.